Hello, good morning, this is not live, but good morning Norm, good morning Real D, Troy Dabber, Abe if you're back, Josh don't forget the intro, welcome to the morning show, Enrique, Facebook, Todd Father, Kyle, everyone else, Kevin, good morning. It's uh, it's Wednesday. I'm recording this, pre-recording this because it's got a late day ahead of us. Recording late night, so I'm gonna let myself sleep in a little bit. But I actually got around to it. Coming to you live from the Roosevelt Studios in the Bronx. Mustache still growing strong. Iron and wine playing. I mean, I don't talk about the song too much. I kind of just let it play in the intro. This is Iron and Wine, as sleepy as you can get. I. I love this song. I uh, Iron and Wine released this song as like part of its archive series. Like, hey, here's some lo-fi shit I recorded back in the '90s that never released. I love it. I love it. Um, I think uh, it, it talks about that time of your life in between, in between uh, adulthood and teenage years when you're. You know, maybe, you know, in college, out of college, and you still don't really have structure and you have time to just fuck around with your friends and do nothing. Like he says, uh, halfway home and going nowhere. All I can tell you is how we spent the time. Like, not sure. Couldn't tell you what our goals were. All I can tell you is what we did. Friends are made in the strangest ways and I'll miss them by and by. Uh, it's a line in here at the very beginning where he says, um, Casey was asked his favorite joke, fluttered away just before he spoke, but it came to me. Like, he's such good friends with Casey that he knows his favorite joke. I couldn't think of it. Oh, yeah, that is your favorite joke. Just, like, deep friendship stuff. So, anyway, that's Iron and Wine. This is the morning show. If you're watching this, uh, I'm guessing you didn't just stumble upon it on Facebook Live or YouTube, and you know what it is, but... If for some reason this is the first time you're tuning in, it's the morning show. It's bite-sized bits of everything that I enjoy. A little, little, little history of American towns, a little baseball players, some books at the end. And this is uh, a pre-recorded one, but usually they're live. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic morning. I'm happy that I'm getting to this. I just took a half-hour nap in the office. Needed it. Now I'm up. Got a little energy drink. Get me going. Let's get into it. The town we're talking about today is Mayo, Florida. Mayo, Florida. Mayonnaise, Florida. No, just Mayo. Just Mayo. Uh, Mayo, Florida. The town was named after the Confederate Colonel James Ooh, Mik- Mik- Mikaya Mayo Makaja Mikaja. I don't know how to pronounce that middle name. M I C A J A M I C A J A H Mikaja. In August of 2018, Mayo temporarily changed its name to Miracle Whip as an advertising stunt with Kraft's Miracle Whip. Oh, my God. How much do you think they got paid for that? I'm going to get into that. First, let's go check out the map. Uh, First, what are we doing here? Oh, I have have this set up wrong. Uh, A quick fix, mind you. Don't don't fret. Uh, Don't fret. Mayo, okay. Here you go. Mayo, Florida. What's the high school called? Okay, we're in northern Florida. 
All right, we're in, we're not Panhandle, but we're in Northern Florida, way up there. By, I mean, what's the closest city here? Live Oak, O'Brien, Florida. Didn't know that existed. Swamp. Hmm. What's the biggest like city? Gainesville. Okay. Lake City. And Tallahassee's over there. Mayo. Florida. Oh, tiny little square. Oh, I'm into this. Look how tiny this is. Mayo Fertilizer. Mayo Food Mart. Mama Tees. Mayo. They got a nice baseball field. Okay. Lafayette High School baseball field. So it's not Mayo High. Oh, my God. The tennis courts look like something out of Stranger Things. They look like the fucking underground is coming out of them. Football field, baseball field, bunch of school buses, subs and more. Perfectly kind of square town. Oh, there's something called Daddy's up here. What do you think? That is. I'm going to daddy's. Daddy's, daddy's, daddy's. Looks like just a house by the high school. What the hell is... It look, doesn't it, this looks like just a house. Oh, dude, why don't, why don't they let us drop? We all want to go see what daddy's is and you won't even let us go there. Okay. Daddy's is in here somewhere. I mean, that's just a guy's house. Somewhere over there is an establishment called Dad. <laughs> How does that happen? Oh, it's a bar. I mean, that's just a guy's house. Where are we? I'm going to, I have to go. Daddy's Bar, Mayo, Florida. Daddy's. Casual, good for groups. No reviews. Yeah, I think this is just someone's house that they put, they entered themselves onto Google Maps and called themselves Daddies. There's absolutely nothing. So we found Daddies. Congrats. That's fun times. We found Daddies. We're excited about it. Um, we have some drone footage of Mayo, Florida. Maybe there's dad Daddies on here. That'd be kind of cool. Drone footage can make any town look badass. Supposedly there's a bunch of historical buildings. The offensive coordinator for University of South Florida, Kerwin Bell, is from here. House of Seven Gables, Lafayette County Courthouse, Old Mayo Free, whatever. All right, let's let's check out the doc about them changing their name. Oh, five minutes long. Maybe we watch it in a little fast speed. Uh, get out of here. Drone footage. We're watching this doc now, which is just an ad. So now we're watching a giant Mayo, ad. Florida small town I guess it's kind of uh, the same old same old every day and nothing exciting like ever happens here I think it slowed down a whole lot had a lot of dairy farms go out of business to me there's just not enough people nobody really thinks about it because it's so small it's a one red light town cars get off the interstate and come through this area we'd like for them to stop This right here is kind of porn for me. Small town America, little interviews, tell them. I mean, it's what we're doing on the show, but I don't have any insight knowledge. Love this shit. Let's keep watching. But now here comes the big ad. In June of 2018, representatives from Miracle Whip contacted Ann Murphy, so the mayor of Florida. Miracle Whip would like to change the name of the city. Are you serious? It's a little crazy, but, you know, it gives you a sense. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is very exciting. I think it's going to be a historical thing for my I'm city. speeding this up. It's really going to showcase the town. Super nice. Definitely. No other residents of Mayo, Florida were made aware of this decision. Good morning, Mayo. We are very honored to be in Mayo, Florida today. We've been around town the last few days and just getting a feel for the town. And of course, we came to the same conclusion that we're sure everybody comes to. You guys are good people. So can I suppose that Mayo is not who you are? Mayo is plain. Are you guys plain? Mayo is boring. Are you guys boring? 
Oh, this, is, this is straight out of this is straight out of like True Detective when they go to those um, those tent church revivalist shit on the like outskirts of town. That's what this gathering looks like. Thank you, Ambassador. At this time, I hereby declare the town of Mayo will henceforth and permanently be named as Miracle Wheel. A fair and honest representation of who we truly are. Exciting, complex, and decidedly not Mayo. They're all so upset. I mean, it was a big surprise and it was a big shock. And uh, just didn't go over very well. I don't want to be We're not going to change the name of this town. I prefer Mayo. I thought it was funny because I was like, wow, people are really bad. I was like, right. Now everything is changing. So when, uh, on my license, is it free? Your new change? license will look like this. Get our address changed. My address is going to be P.O. Box, Miracle Whip. And now our water tower no longer says Mayo, it says Miracle Whip. I guess people were mad about it, but I thought it was cool. It should have been put on the ballot. We should have say in this. The battery in my pacemaker is not doing real good right now, and I'm going to hold you accountable if anything happens. How long have you been <laughs> forever? <laughs> is this real? <laughs> it's a good ad. Um, man, I'm with the people of Mayo. They have pride in their name. Uh, <laughs> that kid, that guy said that if his pacemaker is acting up and if he dies, it's on their hands. So that's tough, Miracle Whip. That was forever. Then this happened. The town of Mayo, Florida is changing its name to Miracle Whip. The mayor of Mayo... The president of Northern Florida will be holding the mayo... Who's just in for mayo? Change. I'm hungry now. Hold the mayo. Hold the mayo. <laughs> it was crazy. It was everywhere. And there was one billion hits. Nobody expected anything like this to happen. Mayo just changed overnight. Everybody's been posting about it and asking where I'm from and like if I'm from there. Changing it into Miracle Whip has probably been the most exciting thing that will ever happen here. Pretty much the whole atmosphere of the town changed. <laughs> okay, hold on. The, the cheerleader sign said, It will be a Miracle Whip if you can... It will be a miracle if you can whip these hornets. Okay, I like that. So we're going to make a big banner that our boys run through. It's probably going to say whip the people. <laughs> people are going to come see what great people, what great citizens that lives here. It's a sweet. I thought I would never be open to changing the name of Mayo. We would never change the name of our business, Mayo Hardwell. But it looks like to me it's been a good thing for my little town. Welcome. I'm Alan Marklaw, owner and operator of Miracle Whip Hardware. Welcome to the Sun and Sea Barbecue. Hi, I'm Belinda, owner of Miracle Whip Cafe. Best barbecue in Miracle Whip Bar. Where you can find the best fried chicken in the world. Come on down. Bring the family. Have a great day. It's good for the community all around. I think it really brings people together and, and gives us something to look forward to. People know who we are. People know where we are. I love living in Miracle Whip Florida. I think when the newborns are born in the city of Miracle Whip, people are going to say, you're very tangy. So what happened? I mean, that was pretty funny. I enjoyed that a lot more than I thought I was going to enjoy that. What What happened? They changed it back pretty quickly. I mean... This is like really good marketing by Miracle Whip. Oh, my grandma's calling me. This should be nice. Ready? Hello, Grandma. Grandma. She didn't realize she called me. Grams. Talking about tomatoes. Hey, Grandma. Well, sad. Thought we were all going to hear from my Grams. Anyway, uh, the town of Mayo. She's talking about tomatoes with someone. I like the advertising by Miracle Whip. Smart move. I thought I was going to hate it and it was going to be cheesy and corny, but... <laughs> Shocking the public into the name change and having their reactions is pretty funny. Unless that was all stage, I don't think it was. It seemed pretty real. So I'm I'm in. I'm in on the town of Mayo that changed her name to Miracle Whip for a day. And now we've all learned that, and we're all better for it. Maybe you guys already knew it. Maybe you're from Mayo. Changing the water tower. How much do you think they paid for that? Like, honestly, how much do you think they paid? Half million bucks? 
Donated some new bu- school buses to the school. Donated a new school. I wonder what that cost. No idea. Moving on. Random player of the day today is Newt Kimball. Newt Kimball is a pitcher. Played for six seasons. Cubs, Brooklyn Dodgers, Cardinals, Phillies. Died in Las Vegas. There's not much going on with Newt. Let's go look at the game log. They didn't have a bio for him. They usually always have bios. Passed away in Las Vegas in 2001. Went to Santa Monica High School. His middle name was Whitney. Okay. Uh, Broke in as a 22-year-old in 1937. Pitched in two games. Didn't do too well. Six earned runs over five innings. Only one. No, no starts. Came out of the pen. So he was a reliever the whole time. He got a couple starts. He got six starts in 1943. He got traded. He was a part of a trade. Let's check the trend. Uh, transactions. Traded by the Cubs with Gus Mancuso, Mancuso to the Dodgers for Al Todd. Uh, then that was the only trade. So 19. So he opened with the Cubs, and then they traded him. To Brooklyn. Let's see. Let's see his debut. Look, he only pitched a couple innings. In his debut, it was May 7th, Chicago Cubs versus Brooklyn, 1937. Look at the Brooklyn Dodgers logo, just a green B. Cubs logo, basically the same. All right, nickname check real quick. We got Augie Gallon, Lonnie Fry, Ripper Collins. Hell yes. Uh, Frank Demery, Ken O'Day, Stan Hack, Joe Marty, Bill Jurgis, Clyde Shown, Clay Bryant, Clyde Clay, Gabby Harden, Phil, and Newt. All right. Uh, for the Dodgers, we had Gibby, Johnny, Buddy, Heine, Heine, Haney, Manush, Cookie, nickname. Tony, Woody, Roy, Fred. Woody nickname, I guess. All right, so let's check that out. The nicknames, we've got Ripper Collins here. Birth name, James Anthony Collins. Why did you go by Ripper? We all want to know. The nickname Ripper developed during an on-field incident that occurred when Jimmy was a young player. A ball, a ball rocketed off his bat and struck a nail protruding from the outfield fence, it caused the cover to partially tear. When asked to hit the ball, the retrieving outfielder saw the ball hanging and said it was a ripper. That's almost the best nickname check we've had on the show. Like, that's what you want. Some sort of dumb story that stuck. This dude hit a ball, it hit the fence, and it hit the nail and the nail ripped the ball. The outfielder said it was a ripper. And then his nickname became Ripper, so much so that he goes by Ripper Collins. That's what nicknames are all about. Fucking love it. Okay, the other nickname we had was uh, Heine Manouche. Hall of Famer Heine Manouche. Uh, birth name Henry, so maybe that was just play off that. And then Cookie Lava Jetto. Cookie Lavagetto, birth name Harry. How did we get the name Cookie? Uh, Cookie is best known for one swing of the bat against Bill Bevins. Lavagetto signed with Cookie De Vincenzi. Signed with Cookie De, De Vincenzi, owner of the Pacific Coast League's Oakland Oaks. Harry became known as Cookie's Boy and eventually just plain Cookie. Okay. That's fucking weird. Like the dude who signed him, name was Cookie, so they called him Cookie's Boy. It's kind of how Babe Ruth got his nickname. Cookie. Okay, so just inherited the nickname Cookie from the dude who signed him. Uh, Woody English, birth name Elwood Wood. That adds up. Okay. We got it. I mean, Ripper with a nickname check was awesome. So let's see when our dude, our dude uh, Newt, pitched. 
Newt, where you at? Okay, so Newt came in in the eighth inning when his team was behind 9-1. to one. He induced a ground out back to himself from Fred, from Fred Frankhouse. Then he walked someone. Then he gave up a single. Then a ground out. Okay, so we still got two runners on. Uh, runners on first and third with one out. Then he gave up a double to Eddie Wilson. Then he gave up another double to Cookie Lavagetto. So he gave up three runs. Then a single. Didn't end. Then Woody flied out to shortstop. Bad debut. Let's go to his last game ever played in 1943. We're looking at Newt Kimball for all of those that just joined us. Not a live show. All right, he got traded halfway through the 1954 season from Brooklyn to Philly. And Philly used him as a starter a little bit in the beginning. He had a complete game. Oh, I wonder if that's his only com- how many complete games he had. All right, he had a complete game in 1943. In 1942, he did not have a complete game. In 1941, he did not have a complete game. In 1940, he had a complete game, so he had two. Well, this is a better one, I think. This is 1940, September 26, the second game of a doubleheader. He threw a complete game. Um, did it say no earned runs? No earned runs. So this is probably the best game of his life. Strikeout, ground out, single. In the second inning, one, two, three, fly ball. And here's the unearned run. Reached on error on the catch by Eddie Juiced. Reached on an error. Eddie and Elmer. And then let's see. Did he blank him? He blanked him the rest of the way. That damn error, man. Best start of his whole life. Jimmy Ripple was the last batter. That's a good name, Jimmy Ripple. So that's uh, that's Newt. His name Newt Kimball. Not much on this guy. Died in Vegas. Young looking guy. Newt Kimball. Don't see if there's any videos. There's no way. Newt Kimball. She turned me into a newt. This can't be about him. What's happening in this? What is this? Newt Kimball was a need for my Cubs all-time roster collection, so I was uber pleased to end up with his oddity, a short-term Cub from the late 30s. He doesn't have much of a cardboard presence, and I don't know too much about him either. Let's flip this baby over and do us some learning. So it's a baseball card. We got a Wrigley blogger. We got a Newt card. Interesting. All right. Well, that's Newt. Newt Kimball. Happy that we all get to know him. More excited we fell into Ripper Collins. This is what happened here. The Mayo, Florida, them changing their name, the Miracle Whip for an advertisement. That was good stuff. We all enjoyed that. Ripper having a great nickname origin story. Wow. Two for two. We all enjoyed the hell. Let's get weird. We're going to go to the books. I got this book I've been reading. I've told you guys about this guy, Jamie um, Iredell. I think is how you say his name. And I told you about this book when I started reading it, actually. It's very interesting. This dude writes interesting formatted books. Like, I don't know how to describe this to you guys. He, there's no chapters. There's no chapters. There's no, um, like, stop and starts. It's, um, I'm not sure if there's a linear story yet. It's so interesting. He, he's, he's weaving. All right, so I think I told you about this before anyone that, that what didn't listen to that old episode. Uh, what Jamie Iredell, and I think that's how you pronounce the last name, I'm not sure. He writes a lot of unconventional formatted books. I have enjoyed them all. I'm interested in it mostly because the format is so weird. You know, he's got one called Poem, Prose, and Novel. I've, I've read you stuff from that before. He's got autobiographical biography essays. It's probably the most normal one. He's got the alphabet 
of Freaks. Good books. I enjoy them. They're different. This one's so different. So this one is, he's weaving the history of Catholic missionaries that came to California to convert natives and start missions and all this, and his own personal history growing up a devout Catholic. And, you know, some of the churches and, and the priests that he, like, like they, he attended, like, he's actually telling us their actual history, and they go. It's very, very interesting. There was one part of the history here that I thought was kind of jarring, so I'm going to talk about it. And I think this is the second time I've talked about it. It's what I'm reading currently. I'm starting to take the bus to work again, so I have time to read. So I get, get like, 10 pages in every morning and night. Or every morning, and then on my way home, I usually listen to podcasts. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Page 35. So he's talking about, um, I'll just read it uh, quickly, and then I'll stop and explain what is, well, you'll understand what's weird. The Spanish crown under Carlos II worried that the Russians threatened to advance on land that Spain had already claimed as Alta California. So claim came to, Ca Spain came to California. They claimed land that they said it's theirs. The Spanish crown worried that the Russians were going to take it for them own, their own. The crown could not spare soldiers in occupying forts that did not exist up the California coast. But they did have Francisian friars. All right. Uh, the Francisians, I don't know if I'm saying that right, absolutely believed that the Spanish crown wanted to occupy California for the sole purpose of bringing Christ to the pagans. To win souls for God. So the the Frank Franciscans, I don't know how you say it. Franciscans. Franciscans, probably France like like San Francisco. Franciscans. Okay. Um the Franciscans absolutely believed that the Spanish crown wanted to occupy Cal. So they thought they were doing it to convert people, right? That was their only goal. And the Spanish were worried that the Russians were coming. In 1769, in California, Father Sarah. Father Sarah founded Mission San Diego de Alcala, named for St. Didacus. I don't know how to pronounce this. Didacus? St. Didacus? Didacus spent his last years at the Convento de Santa Maria de Jesus de Alcala, the mission they set up, where he died from a fragrant abscess. This pus draining hole in his body emitted a pleasant smell. When Henry the Fourth of Spain broke his arm while hunting, after praying to St. Didicus, Didicus, he had the saint's body removed from its casket so that the king might touch the corpse. Ugh. Upon doing so, the king's arm was healed. In another Didicus story, the prince of Astorius, after fornicating and reveling all night, suffered a dramatic fall and gave himself a concussion. The next morning, he was partially paralyzed, blind in one eye, and the pain and swelling in his head had become unbearable. Still able to talk, he asked for an intervention of St. Didicus. The saint was brought beside the prince's deathbed, and the prince's hand laid upon the 100-year-old uncorrupted corpse. When the prince awakened from a long sleep, he said that Didacus had come to him in a dream, assuring him he would not die, and he did not, at least then. So, like, what the fuck? They were digging up dead people? Saints and touching their bodies? How fucking weird is that? How do you say... St. Didicus. Let's see what this dude looked like. Um, nah, boring looking. How do you pronounce it? Okay, we have a... Uh, the obscure saint of the month for November is St. Didicus. Didicus, As a young man in Spain, Didicus joined the secular Franciscan order and lived for some time as a hermit. After he became a Franciscan brother, he developed a reputation for great insight into God's ways. He was so generous with the poor that the friars sometimes grew uneasy about his charity. Didicus volunteered for the missions in the Canary Islands and labored there energetically and profitably. He was also the superior of a friary there. In 1450, he was sent to Rome to attend the canonization of fellow Franciscan St. Bernardine of Siena. 
When many friars gathered for that celebration fell sick, Didicus stayed in Rome for three months to nurse them. After he returned to Spain, he pursued a life of contemplation full-time. He showed the friars the wisdom of God's way. He died in 1463. San Diego, California is named after Didicus, who was canonized in 1588. His feast day is celebrated on November 7th. What? Okay. Nothing about his body being dug up. Didicus? St. Didicus body corpse dug up. Ew. What a weird Google. I don't know if that's going to come up, but I trust my guy, Iredell. Ugh. Anyway, yeah, so that's crazy history of uh, Didicus. Didicus in the book, uh, Last Mass. It is uh, It is interesting. I feel like, you know, I'm at about page 40 pages in. I think I'm going to settle in. But it, I, I, I kind of, you know, I'm starting, it's starting to unravel. Like, ah, I get what you're doing here, Jamie. Juxtaposing, you know, at one point... It's his personal autobiography mixed with the history of uh, those. You know, at one point he's talking about this saint doing crazy shit. Like there was a part where the saint was trying to get other women, uh, this woman in trouble for being a witch. And he just like, it was fucking terrible, man. Like what they said she did. It's like he just made up every bad thing someone can do and pinned it on this woman. And then like, you know, he juxtaposed it to like, okay, modern day he grew up going to that Saint Church is named after that saint, and then here's what he actually did. So I think it's him coming to grips. Very, it's an interesting book. I'm enjoying it. It's different, and that's that. I think that's the whole episode, guys. Appreciate you hanging out. I'll be live again tomorrow. Um, we'll listen to some more of this Iron and Wine song that I like so much. I'm gonna skip ahead a little. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Hope you have a fantastic day. Here's, here's what you do today. You don't sit on any compliments. If you think something nice about someone, tell them. That's what you enjoy compliments. So why don't you just go shout, give someone. Only if you think on it. Don't do fake compliments. Don't sit on any compliments, all right? Bad's bad for you. Get them all out. See ya.